and I thought picking my top movies of the year was hard. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. It's officially 2020, so you know what that means. We've seen the end of another decade. The 2010s are over, and so it's the perfect time for me to talk about my top 50 movies from the last decade. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. This list was really a challenge to put together. There were so many great movies released during the 2010s, and so many not-so-great ones that I still really love. This was the first decade in which I was an adult for the entirety of the decade, and also the first one that I truly, fully invested myself into film, and specifically film criticism. I started to approach movies in a slightly different way than I ever had before, and that ended up making it so much harder to pick my top 50 movies, and then rank those movies. Not gonna lie, quite a few of the placements here are total toss-ups, and some of the numbers are kind of arbitrary. I love all of the movies on this list. So a couple disclaimers here. A ridiculous number of movies come out every year, let alone every decade, so there are plenty of movies from the 2010s that I haven't had a chance to see yet, and obviously those movies won't be included in this list. And since I limited this to only 50 movies, there are a lot of films, even ones I completely love, that didn't make the cut. The other thing to keep in mind is that these are my personal top movies of the decade. There are a lot of different criteria you could use to determine the best movies, but the ones on this list are included and ranked according to how much I enjoyed them. Remember, these are just my top movies, not the top movies, so be sure to post your own personal top movies of the 2010s in the comments below. I've already reviewed some of these movies on this channel, so if you want to check those out for some more in-depth thoughts on each of them, I'll put links in the description below, and I'll also link some of them up in the cards as we go along. Alright, let's get this first half of this top list started. Coming in at number 50, Source Code. I am definitely a bit of a sucker for high-concept sci-fi movies, and you'll certainly see that that fact contributed to this list on more than one occasion. And so, this particular film involves elements that are inherently interesting to me, but it's what it does with those elements that earns it its spot on this list. It's one of those movies where you're just thrown into the story, so it's kind of confusing at first, but not in a frustrating way, more of an intriguing way. So you get really invested in the story, and it's just very cool once the secrets of that story start to get revealed to you. On top of the incredibly interesting plot, you've got Jake Gyllenhaal as the lead character, so you can't really go wrong with this one. Coming in at number 49, The Help. Now this was a movie that I initially had zero interest in seeing. I actually didn't watch it for quite a few years, and I regret that because I really enjoy this movie. I think I expected this one to be a very dramatic, oscar baity film, so I was extremely pleasantly surprised by how funny it was. You could argue that it takes a more light-hearted approach than one might expect given the subject matter, but that ends up making it as enjoyable as it is compelling. It's also got some really great performances. Viola Davis is the most traditionally dramatic here, but I also love the comedy-drama balance of Emma Stone and Octavia Spencer's performances, too. Coming in at number 48, Detroit. This is another movie that I took way too long to finally see. In fact, I only just watched this movie for the first time about two months ago, making its inclusion in this list pretty impressive, because I have a tendency to be more reserved with my feelings about first-time watches. But this one just struck the right chord with me, and I was incredibly invested in it. It's about a true event that I knew next to nothing about, which already had me interested in the story, but then it's presented in a way that's really gripping and tense, because you're right there in the situation with these characters. I really regret not catching this one in the theater, because this is easily my favorite Catherine Bigelow film. Coming in at number 47, Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. This is a movie that really surprised me. Star Wars as a franchise isn't exactly my thing. I certainly don't dislike it, but I definitely don't have the love for it that so many people do. 
I would consider myself to be a very casual Star Wars fan. Even though I was of movie-watching age when the prequel trilogy came out, I never saw any of them in the theater, so I was kind of excited to finally see a Star Wars movie on the big screen. I had expected this movie to be very much in line with the other films, and it is story-wise, but there's just something about this movie that appeals to me on a much stronger level than any other Star Wars film. I like the characters and character interactions here way more than those in past films, and this had a solid comedic core too that doesn't go too overboard or get too slapstick, which I appreciate. I think this might actually be my favorite Star Wars movie. Coming in at number 46, In Time. I can't imagine this one made too many top lists, but I really like this movie. I told you, I'm a sucker for high concept sci-fi. This is a movie where the premise is the main draw for me. You know, the acting is fine, but pretty average. The script and dialogue are iffy. The technical aspects are pretty mediocre, but it's just such a cool concept with some really interesting world building elements and kind of relevant social commentary. This movie gets a lot of hate, but I always have a really good time watching it. Coming in at number 45, Brooklyn. This movie was definitely one of my biggest surprises of the decade. It went completely under my radar when it came out, and I didn't see the film until about a year later when I was visiting a friend. The little plot blurb I read didn't sound that interesting, so I really reluctantly agreed to his pick, but once it got going, I was completely captivated. It has a simple plot. It's basically a slice-of-life immigrant story, but for some reason, I just really connect with this movie. The characters feel so real, and everything has this natural and unforced quality to it, which makes for a very affecting film. Coming in at number 44, A Quiet Place. This is one of my favorite horror movies in recent years, and even though it's got an incredibly simple premise, it tackles its story in such an effective way. There are only a handful of characters, and even the locations are pretty limited, but this story that's low on complexity is incredibly high on tension. It's a nerve-wracking and breath-holding experience, made all the more intense by its fantastic sound design. As you'd expect from the title, this is a largely quiet movie, and when it does use sound, it's very deliberate, which is pretty unique for a horror movie. Definitely looking forward to the sequel this year. Coming in at number 43, Green Book. This is the first Best Picture winner on this list, but that fact is not the reason it made the cut. It's on here because I really loved this movie. Much like the previously mentioned The Help, this movie's also been criticized for its lighthearted and more comedic approach to some pretty rough subject matter. And I can appreciate those criticisms, but I definitely see this as more a film about friendship, so I think the tone is pretty fitting, actually. The comedy's great, but it's the relationship between Tony and Doc that's the real highlight of this film for me. I think both Viggo Mortensen and Mahershala Ali give great performances here, and it's their chemistry together that really makes this movie work. Coming in at number 42, Get Out. This is the second horror movie to make the list, and also the second one to be directed by a comedian. It might sound strange, but really, it makes sense, because comedy and horror are two sides of the same coin. And with his directorial debut, Jordan Peele balances that coin on end perfectly. We get the scares and thrills we want from a horror film, but we also get big doses of humor as well. We also get a lot of social commentary that plays out on multiple levels. It's ingrained in the plot itself, but it's also present in the underlying themes and messages too. And so all of those things come together to form a unique and intriguing story and a really solid movie. Coming in at number 41, Kingsman The Secret Service. Much like high concept sci-fi, action spy comedies are something I have a tendency to gravitate towards. So the first time I saw this movie, I knew I was going to like it, but I had no idea just how much I was going to like it. 
This movie is all in with all three of its genres. The spy aspects and world building that surrounds them are incredibly fun and actually pretty original. The comedy hits far more frequently than movies like this typically do, and the action far surpasses genre expectations as well. It's all very stylized and fun, but comedies don't usually have quite the brutality to their action that this movie does, which further helps to set it apart. Coming in at number 40, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. This is the fourth film in the now long-running franchise, and it manages to satisfy all the Mission Impossible cravings we have while still enlivening the franchise with fresh new ideas. MI3 was good, but this one ramps everything up to 11. And despite the cinematic grandiose and craziness of the action, it still manages to feel kind of real. Ethan Hunt gets hurt. His technology malfunctions. He messes up. He fails. All of this makes his plight seem even more urgent and the path to hopeful success more entertainingly satisfying. Coming in at number 39, Kick-Ass. Superhero movies are everywhere these days. They were kind of everywhere in 2010 too when this one came out, but it was a little different. Gritty comic book movies were still the exception, and even the most action-packed ones were never particularly brutal. But then Kick-Ass came along and really changed things up. Technically, the film is based on a comic book, but these weren't really well-known, established characters, and so it felt like a fresh and real take on superheroes and vigilantes. It balanced its genres really well, and provided some dark comedy and some really brutal action, a combination that would reappear in Matthew Vaughn's later Kingsman films. Despite being called kick-ass, I still think the best character was Hit-Girl, and I still wish that they had done a Hit-Girl spin-off movie. Coming in at number 38, Guardians of the Galaxy. Sticking with our superhero theme here, we've got the first appearance of the MCU in this list. And of all the MCU movies, this was easily the biggest surprise for me. As has been the case with all of the non-core Avengers characters, I had no idea who the Guardians of the Galaxy were before this movie came out. And to be honest, it looked ridiculous to me. We had Andy from Parks and Rec, a green alien, another gray and red alien, a raccoon, and a tree. <laughs> what? <laughs> but somehow it's great. It's incredibly funny, the characters have great chemistry and interactions, the soundtrack's amazing, and to me at least, it's easily the most fun film in the MCU. Coming in at number 37, Hidden Figures. This movie combines some of my favorite things when it comes to film. First, it tells a previously untold true story that's as interesting as it is entertaining. Second, it's set during the 60s. It's my absolute favorite decade, and I love when modern movies are set during the time period, because we get such great production design and music out of it. And third, the plot's centered around science. I'm a biologist rather than an engineer or physicist, but anytime a science story makes it to the big screen, it's a win in my book. This movie's got drama, it's got a lot of comedy, and it's also got excellent performances by all three of its female leads. Coming in at number 36, The Adjustment Bureau. Ah, high concept sci-fi once again. The premise and world building surrounding it are very cool. There's an agency that has some science fiction-y capabilities that they use to direct people without their knowing along a predetermined path through their life. Obviously, this gets disrupted when somebody becomes aware of this and is able to pull back the curtain on the Adjustment Bureau. And so this results in a pretty tight little sci-fi thriller whose core romantic plotline actually works in the context of the story. Plus, it stars Matt Damon and Emily Blunt. Come on. Coming in at number 35, Captain America the Winter Soldier. We return to the superhero genre now with the MCU's take on a spy thriller. So I definitely am nothing against the earlier films in the MCU. I think they work as great introductions and setups for all of the characters, but they all have a very similar feel to them. I mean, there's some nuance there, but you know. So when Winter Soldier came out, it was like a breath of fresh air within the MCU. It was still a superhero movie, but it wasn't only a superhero movie. 
it had a spy thriller plot that you could have dropped non-superhero characters into and still come out with a good movie. And so it felt unique among the MCU films, and I think really paved the way for the genre and tone diversity that we see in many of those later films. Coming in at number 34, Tangled. It's hard to believe we've made it this far into the list without hitting an animated film, but I can assure you it's not the last one on here. I'm a big fan of Disney movies, but I'll admit that I haven't been really big on many of them in recent years. We know Disney animation's gone through several eras over the decades, and so Tangled was only the second movie of the current revival era. Rapunzel has never been a favorite fairy tale of mine, so I was initially a bit skeptical about this movie, but man is this one entertaining. The characters are awesome and surprisingly well developed. It's got a good villain and it's incredibly funny without being stupid funny. Again, this isn't the only animated movie on this list, but it was the most surprising one for me. Coming in at number 33, Baby Driver. So it's no secret that I'm a huge fan of Edgar Wright's films. Shaun of the Dead is my absolute favorite movie, and all of his films have great characters and humor and impeccable editing. Baby Driver is no different. In fact, I think the blending of music and visuals here is my favorite in any movie. The soundtrack is so intentionally well paired with every scene and every shot in the movie that it's just such an incredibly cool and fluid experience. This is probably the least comedic of Wright's films, but that definitely doesn't make it any less entertaining. This movie's a really good time. Coming in at number 32, Moneyball. I think sports movies often get overlooked when talking about top films. I'm a baseball fan, so I already had a natural inclination towards this one, but I gotta say, this is a sports movie that I think even non-sports fans will like, because it's not really a sports movie. It's about baseball, but it's less about the game itself than about the management side of things. It's based on the real-life 2002 season of the Oakland A's and is a really riveting story. Unlike most sports movies, this is focused on the off-field strategizing, which leaves enough connection to the game for fans, but doesn't bog itself down in the things that non-fans hate about sports. Coming in at number 31, Thoroughbreds. This is a movie that I never hear anybody talk about, and I don't know if that's because nobody saw it or if people just don't have an opinion on it. I'm kind of thinking it's option number one, so there's a good chance that this might be the most obscure film on this list. And it's kind of a hard one to describe. The plot is sort of unusual, but it's really the tone that makes it hard to describe this one. It's a somewhat twisty mystery thriller, but it's got this weird comedic and quirky darkness to it too. But apparently that combination is perfect for me, because I loved this movie. Probably not a film for everybody. I think it's one of those movies you either really connect with and love, or you're kind of apathetic about but I'd suggest checking it out yourself to see where it falls for you. Coming in at number 30, Argo. This is one of those movies where the plot seems so far-fetched that it's almost silly when you read the synopsis or see the trailer, until you realize it's something that actually happened. Because of its implausibility, it's a story and a ruse that feels like it's gonna fall apart at any moment. And considering that this is about a rescue mission, that is incredibly stressful. It's well acted and well directed, both by Ben Affleck, but it's the story that really drives this one. We get the tense rescue and more action-oriented scenes, but we also spend just as much time seeing the planning process and the backside of this rescue operation, which really helps to sell the fact that this is a true story. Coming in at number 29, Wind River. This movie is so emotionally draining, but it's also so good. I had such a surprising experience with this movie, because I went into it completely blind. I hadn't seen the trailer, and honestly, I didn't even know who was in it when I went to the theater. And so I was impressed by how impactful the story was. It's sort of a mix between a crime drama and a mystery thriller, and the investigation and characters at the center of the story are so interesting, but it is one bleak movie. 
everything snowy and cold and the unsettling realism of it all just hits you in, in a way that makes you almost not want to go through it again. But it's just such a good movie that it draws you back again and again. Coming in at number 28, The Peanut Butter Falcon. Well, in complete contrast to the last movie, this film's an utterly positive and uplifting experience. This is actually another one that I went into completely blind, but this one was an advanced screening, so I guess that makes a little more sense. But even without any expectations going in, I was still really blown away by it. Definitely my biggest surprise of 2019. Shia LaBeouf and Zach Gottsagan had wonderful chemistry. Their adventure was fun and funny, and this was the sweetest and most heartwarming movie I've seen in a long time, without ever being sickeningly so. Coming in at number 27, Dark Waters. It wasn't intentional, but by chance, we've got two 2019 movies in a row here. This one's quite a bit different from the previous film, but it also took me by surprise. It's a whistleblower drama, which is a subgenre that I really enjoy, so I did expect to like it, but I had no idea how good of a movie it was actually going to be. It approaches its story in a way that I haven't quite seen before. It really focuses in on the investigatory side of things and doesn't shy away from some of the more technical information, which I think is really important. Because this movie's based on a real story and a real incident. And it's an incredibly important story to tell because it's not an isolated incident. Coming in at number 26, Mud. You know, I've always liked Matthew McConaughey, even during his string of disposable romantic comedies during the 2000s. But he definitely started to get typecast in those sorts of roles and kind of developed a bad rap for it. Mud and The Lincoln Lawyer, which came out a year earlier, are really the roles that turned it around for him. Now, you might think that a movie featuring characters with names like Mud and Neckbone wouldn't have that type of power, but this one does. The story is reminiscent of many others, but is somehow still wholly original. McConaughey's aforementioned performance is fantastic, along with the two kids in the movie, and everything about the film feels remarkably authentic. Alright, so there you have it, the first 25 of my top 50 films of the 2010s. Be sure to check back next week for my top 25 of the decade, and to see which movie is my number one. Remember, I've already reviewed some of these movies, so you can check those videos out if you want some more in-depth discussion of each, as well as my ratings, pros and cons, and even tailored film recommendations. And if you're interested in buying any of these movies, I do have affiliate links to all of them in the description below. I do get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. In the meantime, I'd love to hear what some of your top movies of the decade were, so be sure to let me know in the comments below. Alright, so if you got some enjoyment insider information out of this top list, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe or add it to see more videos like this as well as movie reviews. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies, the way life should be.